afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Belkowitz, and I have to focus on looking at the camera. We're going to uh, go deep and diving into these Q&A days. We've got some awesome, awesome questions here about concrete technology, but we have a, a brilliant, absolutely brilliant week planned for you. And it all gets into making concrete stronger and last longer, whether it's looking at new chemicals, analyzing algorithms, or uh, identifying uh, new practices that, that can help you not only get that great concrete down the chute, but in the form, placed and finished, as well as making it, of course, stronger and lasting longer. So before we get into the meat of this, don't forget to like, subscribe, there's a bell down there that you should hit, um, and let us know if you have any concrete questions or concerns. We're more than happy to dive into them. So this is a pretty lengthy set of questions. It's from uh, Mr. McTeen. Hey, awesome, thank you. You did a great job. And he even apologizes for too long of a question. Don't worry, man. This is good stuff. Ding! So, the questions read. I need to give you insight before I can ask three questions. I poured a stiffened raft concrete slab using 20 MPA concrete. 20 MPA, what is that? Around 4,500, 4,000? So what is that? Uh, 20 times 14 point f or 145. So 20 times 145093. It's right below. It's 3900. No. 2900. What is that? 2900. Yeah. Hey, that was good. 2900, baby. So 2900 uh, MPA uh, with a 80 slump, 80 millimeter slump. So what's 80 millimeter divided by uh, what is that? 2.54. Wait, no, 25.4 millimeters per inch. So what is that, three and a half? 3.14 uh, inch slump, 20 millimeter gravel, which is gonna be you know, a little bit low. It's gonna be around three quarter inch. Uh, also vibrated, compacted the concrete. After power trail had finished, I sprayed on a colloidal silica solution that is sold for curing concrete to total slab. But let's do the list again. What was it? Place the concrete, put on colloidal silica. So place concrete, put on the colloidal silica. Waited an hour, then put on a lithium silicate treatment or a densifier. Then came back the next day, saw something on the surface, scrubbed it, cleaned it, and put on a colloidal silica treatment, and then uh, wet cured it for seven days. That's the last thing. So. There are a bunch of colloidal silicas that can be used to enhance the cure, and some have even been shown to reduce uh, evaporation due to the ambient environment. So yes, good job on step number one. An hour later, you came back and put a lithium silicate densifier. What you saw, that slipperiness to that surface, was the lithium silicate more than likely staying on the top surface. Normally what happens is lithium silicates are very, very reactive. They have a very high pH and the concrete and the colloidal silica treatment has a much lower pH than you're normally going to see with lithium silicate or even potassium or sodium silicate base densifier. So more than likely you had a gel occurring as you put that lithium on top of the colloidal silica and you had a minimum if any, a minimal if any penetration of that lithium silicate that next day when you came back where you saw that white maybe it was a bluish greenish hue to it maybe some orange patches is that lithium silicate basically drying on the surface and you know that's one of the biggest things that people notice between colloidal silica based densifiers and silicate based densifiers. We did a video on that, and let's put the link down below. But the biggest difference that you notice is that more often than not, the silicate based densifiers won't penetrate into the surface as, as, as much as the colloidal silica based. And the colloidal silica based densifiers will also, also oftentimes seem to dry at the surface while the silicate based you might see not really a drying but a glassy appearance to it. Um, and again, that, that silicate is just going to react faster. So that's what I think you saw from item number two leading into item number three. Now in item number three, you came back, 
you washed and scrubbed and cleaned the surface, again, bravo. Take off that, I'm going to call it a contaminant. It's not doing anything for you. And if you're going to put something on top of that slab, it is going to act as a contaminant. So well done. Uh, from there, you put a colloidal silica-based densifier. Not a bad thing. Um, your maybe it's a little bit overkill. Uh, I mean, from washing the surface, you are exposing it, and it still is a green concrete. But you've already put something on the surface. Um, I, I, it's not going to harm your surface, but you're not going to get as much of a penetration, especially if it was the same type. If maybe it was a smaller particle, you could enhance the surface, but. Uh, it's just a little bit of overkill. Uh, not bad, not bad, but you might be throwing some money away. And if you're okay with that to get a little bit more densification, bravo. So the last item was what? Um, seven day water cure. I, you know, if you're doing a seven day water cure, you are by far stretch of the imagination a noob. Uh, putting a water cure on a slab is absolutely awesome. That being said, if you're going to be putting a resilient floor on it, you might have to put a primer on it because you're still going to have a, a, a very high relative humidity within the top surface, and then of course your subsurface of your slab. Um, it's great that you haven't noticed anything except for it seems like good things. You know, with everything that you're doing, I know it can be hot and dry in Australia this time of year, or, or definitely getting to that dry point. So. You know, doing the colloidal silica to reduce the evaporation at the surface is great. Then putting the colloidal silica back on, especially a cleaning off the surface of any efflorescence or ladians 24 hours or the next day to put on another colloidal silica treatment is great. And then water curing it afterwards. I think all of those steps combined um, gave you that environment where you're not seeing those micro cracks. So I, I wouldn't say it's too good to be true. I, I think it's you doing a great job in using new and emerging technologies with something you've obviously done in the past. The only thing I would recommend, so we've got one, two, three, four. I love that you did the colloidal silica treatment in the beginning. I would remove the lithium silicate base treatment um, at the one hour mark. I, I don't know if it's necessary and I think it's uh, a major uh, waste that you're throwing money away. And you know, uh, lithium silicates can be caustic and, and they are expensive. So I would remove that if you feel that it's that necessary to do a, a, a lithium silicate based treatment, I would actually move it to after the water cure. Um, I, I even think that that 24 hour colloidal silica, if you are going to do it, make sure you do clean that surface. That was great. Uh, reopen that surface, create a surface profile to accept that colloidal silica, uh, especially colloidal silicas that form hydrogels. Um, and, and the water cure. I, I think the water cure is a great idea. I would even say that you could remove that next day colloidal silica treatment and just do the water cure. Uh, the other thing is you want to make sure you stay at or below the recommended back of the soup can uh, a dosage, 500 square feet, 250 square feet, or even 1,000 square feet per gallon for that surface treatment. And then, you know, let the concrete dry out a little bit, put in that lithium silicate based treatment, and then clean the slab off from there. Uh, I don't really know what you were using your slab for at a 20 MPA. Um, I assume that's 28 day strength. But at a 20 MPA concrete, uh, I, I can't imagine that's a, uh, what did you say, a stiffened raft concrete slab, but is it a structural slab? Uh, how thick is the slab? So I have more questions of my own, but well done, well done. Hey, thanks for your time. Thanks for your question. This was seriously an awesome question. I think we're going to dive into this question a little bit deeper with an article, a podcast, um, something like that. This was really awesome. So uh, go concrete. Beat asphalt. <laughs>